Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about black holes. In particular, it's about efforts by physicists to get rid of the embarrassing singularity that appears when general relativity models the process of gravitational collapse. For decades, physicists have worried about the breakdown of the equations of general relativity that appears to occur when they model the centre of a black hole. They've called this problem the singularity. Relativistic physics appears to divide by zero when modelling gravitational collapse, and as is well known, if your theory requires dividing by zero, then that is a good sign that it's busted. Conventional black hole theories postulate a singularity, a point where the laws of physics break down. It combines two reversible theories, general relativity and quantum mechanics, to produce an irreversible event horizon, which things can fall into but can't come out of. It postulates a hypothetical partitioning of space-time and matter into causally disjunct regions with incredibly poor supporting evidence, and it has external and infalling observers observing different temporal sequences. In short, the theory is rather obviously a load of nonsense. As astronomical objects which appear to be black holes have been identified, the problem has intensified. Several solutions to the problem have been proposed. One is to think that there will be repulsive forces that engage at some point. These may prevent a singularity from forming, or may prevent gravitational collapse from resulting in a black hole and its event horizon in the first place. However, so far, observations of distant, dense spinning objects and particle accelerators have shown no sign of such a force. This video is about another proposed solution to the problem. The idea I will be discussing says that the inside of black holes is outside this universe. The inside of a black hole, including its hypothetical singularity, simply doesn't exist. In fact, nothing ever penetrates the black hole event horizon. To illustrate the perspective, here is a quote. Nothing that falls into a black hole will ever reach the event horizon, so there is no information paradox. It is also true for the matter of the original star that formed the black hole. There is no singularity inside, and, in fact, there is no inside. It's widely agreed that external observers never see anything penetrate the black hole's event horizon. Instead, things appear to freeze on its surface. This happens because of relativistic time dilation, which slows the passage of time for those near to black holes, a relatively well-understood effect. However, it is widely thought that an infalling observer will see the rest of the universe pass by in a flash as they get smeared out over the black hole event horizon, and then they will experience entering the black hole, or they would do if they were still alive. However, this idea fails to properly account for the idea that black holes evaporate. In fact, by the time the infalling observer reaches the event horizon, the whole black hole has evaporated. So the infalling observer never actually reaches the horizon, because the hole evaporates before it is reached. This solution to the whole issue is not my idea, and it's not terribly new. I first came across the idea in a 2006 New Scientist article by Andreas Keller. The idea was written up formally by Tanmay Vachaspati, Dejan Stojkovic and Lawrence Krauss in 2007 in a paper entitled Observation of Incipient Black Holes and the Information Loss Problem. This paper was all over the news as solving the black hole information loss paradox. Also, Lawrence Krauss is a celebrity physicist, which probably helped promote the paper. To quote from it, The infalling observer never crosses an event horizon, not because it takes an infinite time, but because there is no event horizon to cross. And it also says, Here we find that the shell, even as it collapses, radiates away its energy in a finite amount of time. With some assumptions about the metric close to the incipient horizon, we conclude that the evaporation time is shorter than what it would take by objects to fall through a black hole horizon. This leads us to the conclusion that the asymptotic observer will see the evaporation of the collapsing shell before he can see any objects disappear. The model described here uses standard relativity theory with no changes. It makes all the same predictions regarding gravitational forces outside the hole. However, the model proposes that Hawking radiation is nonsense. Black holes radiate due to ordinary thermal processes. Unfortunately, both hypotheses concerning the radiation apparently predict something close to black body radiation, which for most natural black holes means a very low intensity of radiation. The details do differ between the theories, but we would probably need a small artificial black hole to look for those differences experimentally. The New Scientist coverage in 2007 calls for experimental tests of these hypotheses. However, 
In my view, this rather misses the point. A singularity interpretation arises not from a different theory or from observations, but from doing the maths in existing relativity theory incorrectly. Correct calculations with the existing theory show that nothing ever penetrates the black hole event horizon, and so black holes do not have an inside. Some of the main consequences of all this are as follows. Hawking radiation is nonsense. Nothing ever falls into a black hole in the first place, so nothing ever needs to escape from one. Holes evaporate due to perfectly ordinary thermal radiation generated by the process of spaghettification. The hypothetical singularity at the centre of a black hole is no longer inside the universe, and so does not cause any problems. The black hole information loss paradox is trivially resolved. No information is lost inside black holes, since no information ever inter enters into black holes in the first place. The black hole event horizon does not exist, never forms or remains infinitely far away, depending on how you look at it. It's never observed or reached by any kind of observer, and nothing ever penetrates it. It is true that there's a region that is separated causally from the rest of space and time. However, that region is not part of the universe. Since it's not part of the universe, there's an important sense in which it doesn't exist, and nothing ever penetrates such regions. Considering things from the perspective of information theory further illuminates the idea. Both general relativity and quantum mechanics are reversible theories, except at general relativity's singular points. Combining these two reversible theories and getting a microscopically irreversible outcome at the event horizon is a clear sign that you've made an elementary mathematical mistake. A hole that things can fall into, but not out of, is not a possible solution to this type of math problem, since that violates microscopic reversibility. In the correct interpretation, reversibility is maintained everywhere. The idea that the matter of a black hole is concentrated on its surface helps to explain why the mass of a black hole is proportional to its surface area. That fact is mysterious under the interpretation that the mass of a black hole is concentrated at centre, but is simple and obvious if the mass is concentrated on its surface. Next, Stephen Hawking's mistake. Hawking realised, correctly, that black holes would have a temperature, and so might evaporate if left in a dark place for long enough. He tried to reconcile general relativity with quantum mechanics. However, he didn't take general relativity seriously enough. In general relativity, space-time curves. Hawking didn't apply quantum mechanics on the curved surface, or he would have found that nothing ever got near to the black hole's event horizon. That seems likely to have been a mistake. Take the space-time curvature of general relativity seriously, and the event horizon remains infinitely far away, and so there is no Hawking radiation. This interpretation neatly resolves a lot of problems with the traditional theory. I don't know for sure that it will prove to be correct, since all ideas about black holes have a speculative element. However, if the idea pans out in the way in which I expect, it will prove to be a triumph of the use of rational thinking and Occam's razor over traditional dogma. Um, enjoy!